Well, hi there. I'm Fenwa. I'm Lost. I'm Demo Weasel. And welcome back to Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Ah, oh, so that's where I remember the thing from. I saw that skull emblem over the weekend, and I was like, where the hell is that from? I have no idea. Wait, where did you see it this weekend? One of my friends made it as her emblem on the Rockstar Social Club or something. Mr. Kojima? Oh yeah, Kojima joined our party. That's right. We got the Kojima trophy as well. Can you play as Kojima? No. Uh, he's actually really good for R&D and Intel. You'd think you could, uh, you'd be able to at least put him in a military unit so you could sneak around as Kojima. Well, I mean, there's nothing stopping you, but he's very weak in combat. Oh. Is there like a player model specifically for him? I, I don't believe so. There you wow. go. Good lord, he's hideo. <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay. Careful, Snake. I've never seen anything like that, and I've got no idea how to bring it down. Maybe the scientist knows. However you do it, take that thing out. Uh, I enjoy the Metal Gear trope of whenever something huge comes on screen, Snake has to codex somebody, be told that he needs to fire guns at it. So I believe we're both just... Yeah, I think we ended up bringing the same shit to this mission. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's really only so much that you need to bring with you to, a, to one of these boss battles, and it's mostly bring high explosives and supplies. Mm. Of course. Anything that's metal requires uh, explosives. Anything that's metal requires gears and solid. Regular bullets, they actually do work, but not not as well. Not as spectacularly. So this is our first boss battle against an AI weapon. Spoiler, there will be more. It's Volgan resurrected as a machine. Mm-hmm. It's resting on top of the Shagohod, and it is shooting electricity. That's an AI weapon! It's fast, so be careful! Get out of the way, I can't see. I love how haggard Huey sounds, like uh, in comparison to Otacon. <laughs> oh yeah. Like that, that is a man of the 60s. That's somebody who um, was in a room with Henry Kissinger at one time. Yeah. So does the CRT stand for critical or what? Yeah. Uh, no, it means we're, we're shooting its cathode ray tube. I think you lost. Ha! Beat you to it. Cathode ray tubes, huh? Yeah, the AI pod is a more critical place to hit, but when you chip away at the stuff on the sides, uh, you have the potential to, to... Well, we'll get to that later. Are you going to knife it? Yes. Run up and stab a tank in the side. Knife the machine. It's uh, not uncharacteristic. No, no, no. They're uh, saving it for Metal Gear Rising. And it just ran over you. Yeah, it did. That was pretty funny. I, I think we held our own against this one long enough that we actually got to see like all forms of the boss battle. Yeah, which is the, the most important thing about this Let's Play. We're showing the game off. Well, yeah. I mean, otherwise this video would have been three minutes long. Uh, this Let's Play will be put in a museum at some point. The Smithsonian we're, we're getting for, but we'll settle for uh, state arts and sciences. We'll, we'll settle for the Wax Museum down in San Francisco. I believe that may have been the point in this fight where I laid down and the thing didn't hit me. Destroy the treads on the left and right to stop it from doing its punch attack! Why is it singing? Because it's weird. It's like that creepy, like auto-tune type shit. Yes, that's right. It's gonna be the next, the next big musical sensation. Oh man, this is Femwa misunderstanding. <laughs> well, hey, you know, uh, if I stay close to the ground, then the shock units won't hit me. Oh yeah, of course. If you run away in a zigzag pattern, uh, you'll never be able to get shot. And then you get your ass kicked. What? High voltage incoming! 
Oh no, they're gonna conduit at us. If one of you dies, can the other person like revive them or what? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Enemies have the same mechanic, like whenever uh, somebody has a skull over their head. I thought it was just that knocked out enemies can get woken up. Can, can dying enemies be CPR? I believe they can be. Oh well. There will be some warning signs when it's coming out! Okay, the boss just leaves. Yep. I remember that there's um, something very distinct from a soldier just kicking another soldier to wake them up. He's uh, putting down the supply market. <laughs> he was like, ah, for a second. And they're going to chopper this into this indoor location. That's right, we'll just fold in the Shago Hot out when we're done. Yes. Uh, you see, wonderful. by the way, in the comments, Umbeglo uh, said something about us actually being able to stealthily take out the APC. Oh? Yeah, like, it's apparently possible to trank the guards and the, the driver uh, we... and to get them all without being spotted. That, that sounds really difficult. We have to at least attempt it. There, well, there are uh, extra ops where you revisit some of those battles, so maybe we can try it then. Blow the hatch and climb into the AI pod! You won't be able to get in the AI pod! Yes, here we go. Alright, so new game mechanic time. Oh, that's me. That's right. So you're seeing the boards flash as I continue to blast stuff from the outside. Mm -hmm. It's a co-op activity. I imagine it's even better with four players. Yeah. Do you have three people in there? The S stands for solid. That's right. Now, this will be tutorialized in the next video, so just let it happen. Get the S rank boards, dude. They're the best. Oh. That's how it happened. Oh, yes. Rocket pod away! Metal Gear. That was an unmanned weapon. A prototype. I made it myself. Who are you? I work here. Well, used to, anyway. Name's Huey. And who might you be? You don't look like one of those mercenaries. Me. I'm uh, an entomologist. A fighting entomologist? Yeah, I specialize in butterflies. I'm here to catch Ulysses. Ulysses? Huh. I didn't think they lived in Costa Rica. Morphos, maybe? That's it. I uh, need to get some before the Washington Treaty goes into effect. Says here Morphos aren't covered under the treaty. Uh, must have slipped my mind. You sure you're feeling all right? Anyway, long story short, the butterfly got away. So how about it, Doc? Did you make that big butterfly, too? Uh, yes. And no. What was that thing? What are they doing here? Huh. Something tells me you're no ordinary entomologist. The nukes were loaded on that machine. The project's entering its final phase. Project? 
That's right. The thermonuclear warheads they brought in, the bases scattered throughout Costa Rica, the mercenaries, the AI weapons, the research we were conducting here. It's all for this. We used this facility to develop unmanned weapons. Unmanned? Robots. The one you just fought was a pupa. There's also a flying type called Chrysalis, and a treaded type, the Cocoon. Motor control, target detection, tracking, attack, capture, and transport functions are all controlled by an electronic brain. There's no need for a human pilot. They can only follow simple commands, though. Why build them here? For the CIA. They invited me here a year ago. That's who that guy was. CIA's station chief for Central America. Goes by the name of Hot Coldman. Apparently he was some sort of hero back at the height of the Cold War. He's the one running the show. We called it the Peace Walker Project. Peace Walker. They're going to deploy a new type of nuclear weapon along the Caribbean coast of Latin America. A mobile, unmanned nuclear platform. Unmanned nuclear platform? A failed deadly system that can automatically move into position and launch a retaliatory nuclear strike. It can move on its own, and stealth shields it from radar and satellite detection, drastically reducing the risk of it being destroyed in a preemptive strike. And this is the new deterrent? Supposed to be. The problem is the locomotion system. There's no dry season in the Caribbean. It rains all year round. The terrain is full of tropical rainforest. A lot of the time you can't even build a proper road. So I went back to where it all started. What's that? Legs. Walking power. <laughs> a mobile launcher carrying a thermonuclear warhead even more powerful than the Soviet RDS 220s. That's Peace Walker. Chico's Basilisco. We did the assembly and field testing here. A walking nuke. I sort of borrowed the original idea from behind the Iron Curtain. The missing link between infantry and artillery. Metal Gear. Metal Gear? But they'd actually need to deploy dozens of them. Coldman needs funding for that. And to get it, he's planning a test, which will also serve as a demonstration for the folks back at Langley. Wait, he's launching a nuke to prove that his perfect deterrent works? In his words, to prove that if someone attacks us, we will strike back. Put simply, nuclear deterrence is the idea of using nukes to keep nukes in check. If one side launches nuclear weapons, the other is sure to launch theirs in retaliation, which makes launching an act of suicide. In the end, neither side can use its nukes. It's thanks to this doctrine that the world's two superpowers have avoided all-out confrontation. Nuclear deterrence has brought us peace. At the very least, it's prevented another world war from breaking out. But the theory of nuclear deterrence exists only on paper. In reality, there's no guarantee that either side would follow through with retaliation. There's the chance that a preemptive strike could destroy all the missile bases, render them unable to retaliate. But the biggest flaw in the theory is that the decision to retaliate has to be made by human beings. Let me give you a real-world example. Let's say Country X launches first against Country Y. If the people in charge of Country Y are like you and me, they're not going to be able to retaliate, knowing that they're effectively ending all human life. So then the weak link in nuclear deterrence theory is the uncertainty of retaliation. Bingo. And that creates a loophole Country X can exploit to launch the first strike. Which is why we designed the system to be unmanned. With Peace Walker, retaliation is certain. It chooses the appropriate target and launches a retaliatory nuclear strike every time without needing human input to make the call. Launching a nuclear strike against Peace Walker is tantamount to pushing the launch button against yourself. It closes the loophole in nuclear deterrence theory, rendering our friends in Country X completely unable to launch. What Coldman is saying is that to achieve this goal, 
We need to demonstrate that retaliation will be carried out by a machine. He will launch his nuke. And then his version of deterrence will be complete. And you believe him? I believe in peace through nuclear deterrence. Why? My father worked on the Manhattan Project. He put his whole life into that research. And all it created was this illusion of peace called deterrence. And then I was born. Unable to walk. I had no choice but to face up to the nukes. But... If they do end up launching, it'll all have been for nothing. They've got to be stopped. Where'd they take the warheads? To a base near the border. The final test is five days from now. Where's the base? You're gonna stop them? It's kind of a hike. And besides, there's a surefire way to halt the project. You see, Peace Walker isn't quite finished yet. What do you mean? It's missing one last critical structural component. The AI. Its brain. The reptile pod, the electronic brain I was working on, can only follow commands like, go there, attack that. I guess you could compare it to the human cerebellum. But for nuclear deterrence to work, it must function in place of a human decision maker. It needs something to analyze the huge volumes of data coming in and select an appropriate target for retaliation. Hence, it needs the high-level decision-making ability of a cerebrum. A mechanical cerebrum. The hardware configuration is modeled on the human brain, similar to the pod I worked on, but its role is completely different. Where's it being made? A research lab to the north. An AI expert named Dr. Strangelove is developing it. Very hush-hush. Dr. Strangelove. Strangelove was recruited from the States, too. In the field of AI, there's no one better, that's for sure. But man, what a basket case. She hates everybody. Go to the lab and destroy Peace Walker's cerebrum. I'm pretty sure they haven't finished the final calibrations yet. I'll lend you my ID card. It'll get you through security at the lab. Oh, and uh, one more thing. What's this? A letter of recommendation? Yeah, it's, um, it's from me to Dr. Strangelove. Don't read it, okay? <sighs> so what will you do now? I... I'm done with science. At this rate, I'm probably already halfway to hell anyway. Not so fast. Why not join us? Our place is Outer Heaven. You'd fit right in. Outer Heaven? Yeah. I'm probably better suited to something like that than this paradise. Good. You get a free balloon trip for signing up. Enjoy it. You'll feel like a butterfly. You're an agent, right? Who do you work for? Me. I was a Cold War tool. Same as you. Now I'm not so useful anymore, so they cut me loose. I don't answer to anyone. Call me Snake. Snake? That name seems familiar somehow. Death. Yeah, probably just deja vu. You see that there? Beyond the cloud forest? See those ruins? Yeah. That's where you'll find Dr. Strangelove's lab. <laughs>